I do, especially when you keep getting upsold to a more expensive item, more expensive item over and over and over again. Don't you find that don't you find that annoying? So stick around because today's episode of Amplify Business Ed Show is taking a deep dive into what's really going on and why they can actually work if if done right. And so if you have a business and you're wondering about those sales funnels and you are very annoyed and you know they're, they're just a bit, big pet peeve of yours, I encourage you to stick around because there's actually some valid things that uh, we can learn from them and use them and incorporate them into our business. Because if you are looking for ways to make more money and grow your business, then you want to learn all of the different ways that you can do so, right? I mean, that's what I'm here for. That's my passion is to help you uh, with those kinds of strategies that you can incorporate into your business. And speaking of me, I'm Susan Friesen. I'm an online business specialist. So let's dive into today's show. And if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment. And if you're watching this in replay mode, uh, go ahead and still leave a comment and I will be sure to respond back to you. And if you're watching this on YouTube or on our Facebook page, go ahead and subscribe or hit the like button so that you will be um, notified with the next time I go live, which is pretty much every Thursday morning. I'm still kind of figuring out what's the best time. So today is a little bit later than normal, but uh, let's see if this works for you and uh, come and join me and let's Let's uh, have a party together, right? That's what I'm here for, is to help you. So today's show is based on some feedback that I received and uh, where, where a person wrote me and, and this person said, you know what, I, can, I really dislike the continual upsell. Uh, you know, where it's click here for one thing, then another upgrade, and then another upgrade, and on and on and on. So do you find that annoying too? Put your hand up if you find those continual upsells annoying when you want to just purchase a, a simple little thing like a $7 item and, and you just keep getting uh, sold for more and more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I feel like that old infomercial commercial, right? So here's the deal of what's happening. It's really actually not as cut and dry as you might think. We know about online stores or e-commerce shopping. It's kind of relatively new, wouldn't you agree? Like, you know, 20 years ago, this none of this existed. Well, I guess it started to exist 20 years ago, but not really. And, uh, and so, you know, before online shopping actually uh, uh you know, it kind of merged, right? Uh, online shopping merged with mail order catalogs. And there were how people sold items with or without the need for a brick or mortar store. So who, re who remembers the old Sears catalogs? You know, I remember getting so excited when they came into the mail and, and we would, you know, pick out our Christmas gifts you know, our Christmas wish list from that. Did you ever do that with your parents and, and sit down and, and uh, you know, point at all of the different uh, toys that were in that catalog? Or, or how about the, the Columbia House Music Club? And, and they actually eventually filed for bankruptcy back in 2015. But, uh, you know, when we get those boxes of CDs to listen to each month, uh, you know, it, well, it was it was exciting to, you know, get this stuff in the mail. And, 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 I, and I know I, I just kind of aged myself, but oh, well, I, I digress, right? I, I got a little caught up on in the excitement of that. But, but, you know, when the online shopping emerged, most business owners shifted their efforts online, but still closely mirrored the uh, mail order catalog system which became what we now know as the traditional shopping carts model, right? You know, that's kind of what we know it is as today. The shopping cart model has the customer come to the website, find a product that they like, and then, uh, you know, click the checkout button and make their purchase. It's cut and dry. And, and this is pretty normal now. This is what we see every day. And many store owners still follow this model today. 
and there's nothing wrong with it at all, right? You know, that's perfectly normal. But there is a better way to actually market that store. And if done correctly, uh, you know, which which I'm going to, you know, share in a little bit. So so hang tight, uh, because now there's here's where things kind of get a little off the rails a bit. Uh, when business owners realized, hey, I could sell my online program, my ebook, my digital marketing program uh, that way too, my, you know, or my not my digital marketing program, but my digital program, uh, you know, things started to evolve a little bit. And instead of focusing on mailing the direct sales letters, uh, they realized that uh, the online world was a far better way to go. So you remember getting those uh, sales letters in the mail, uh, which, uh, which I guess, you know, uh, a catalog was one of those sales letters too, right? A pretty major big one, but it was still a sales letter enticing people to go and buy. And, and so, so, you know, when people, when business owners started to realize that they could use these online sales um, shopping cart systems, but for digital products, uh, just like that, the sales funnels were born. And so instead of sending customers to a homepage of a website and hope that they find the store and products within it, uh, sales funnels kind of move customers to a landing page. And this page on the website strictly focuses on one item for sale, just one item only. And that whole page is written with the intention of focusing on delivering a compelling pitch and persuading the visitor to take action and, and to convert that sale, right? So sales funnels were the cat's meow, the golden egg, the answer to all sales problems because they worked. And that's because the typical shopping cart conversion rates were abysmal. You're lucky to get a 1% conversion Whereas sales funnels see conversion rates that are more like three to 5% higher than that. And, and so at, at the end of the day, they proved to be effective at boosting sales and profits. But at some point, things went too far. Marketers got greedy. They didn't want to just sell one item. They wanted to upsell and downsell and cross sell too. Now I say greedy, but in reality, this is the nature of the business to make money, right? We're all here to make money. Now, if you create a system that gets you a higher return on your investment on your marketing dollar, wouldn't you take advantage of it too? So we're here to make money. We're, and if you want to make money, if you want to take advantage of opportunities that make you money, if you want to, uh, you know, discover ways to make money, then, you know, th this is where we're at. Put your hand up if, if you're in business to make money. <laughs> okay. And so, but it, it becomes a, it's a precarious tightrope that we tread on. Wouldn't you agree? Like, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, so to, to some consumers, like the one who replied to me uh, before, you know, they're getting sick and tired of the push, sell more model and, and are rebelling. And are, are you one of those people who are rebelling at this push, sell more model? I know I am. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely there. However, others are happily taking advantage of the super special only available now specials that are thrown at them while they're experiencing the high of making that initial purchase. And that's what is being counted on folks. The dopamine truth behind the sales funnel is called the buyer's high. Have you ever heard of the buyer's high? Let me know. Yeah, let, you know, let me know if, if you've ever even heard of that term before, the buyer's high. But we've all played into that trap. We've seen, you know, how, how many times have you gone to make like a $47 purchase? 
only to be upsold to a seemingly cheap $7 companion item. That makes total sense, right? It makes total sense to get it. Or if you buy like three items, you'll save X amount of dollars off of the total price. Or better yet, get on a monthly schedule and you'll save even more. Yeah, I mean, you've seen this every single day. But wait, <laughs> there's even more. Now you're being told about an incredible deal that's at the lowest rate you'll ever see it ever again. That this it, one is a bit pricier, but man, it's hard to resist. I can count too many times when I've been down, led down that, that rabbit hole. How about you? And the marketer is counting on, on that buyer's high to snatch up, you know, to, to get you to snatch up that deal. Not now. I mean, not later, I mean, but right now, uh, before is gone for good. Like they're, you know, they're really capitalizing on that scarcity, you know, that scarcity that we want to get, right? They're like, guess what? There's literally a dopamine rush that's, that consumers are feeling when they purchase something. And that dopamine kicks in and the brain is filled with feel good chemicals at the time of making that purchase. And this is when we are most receptive to making an additional purchase. Marketers know this. This is the best chance of getting people to buy an additional item. So at the end of the day, we've all been manipulated because of that darned dopamine rush that is very hard to resist. So let me know if that's the case for you. Have you ever fallen guilty and victim of, of that dopamine rush, buyer's high, getting something at the time, you know, some upselling or getting more than what you actually went for? Now, as I said earlier, we're all running a business here. Sales funnels are actually not evil. They have been proven to work. But I personally feel that they've gone too far. You know, the hype and the drama, the scarcity, the, the flash. That's so 2019. <laughs> so it's time to go beyond that and get into empathetic marketing. Uh, one thing that COVID-19 has done is make consumers so much more aware of their spending habits. Are, are you much more aware of your spending habits? Like every penny counts, like making sure that they have enough toilet paper. Although we don't have to worry about that now, but we did 18 months ago, right? Did we have enough toilet paper on hand? It's all about the essentials when we're going through a crisis. And, and they're, you know, people are now seeing right through these exaggerated uh, hyper manipulations and, and we've had enough, right? I've had enough. Have you had enough? You let me know. Uh, but what can, but, but what we can do as honest, authentic, small business owners is what we want to see is those great numbers, but avoid repulsing our ideal customer base. So what can we do, right? What What is possible? So, so this is what uh, I, I wanna teach you about. I wanna teach you about what is possible, that you can have the sales, you can do the, the marketing funnels, and you can enjoy business growth, uh, but it needs to be done right. So what we need to do is exactly what I just said, be authentic avoid the hype, be real, and do one upsell during the checkout, a valid one too, one that you know will truly make a difference in that person's life. And tell them why it'll make a difference in that person's life, whatever it is that you're selling. It, it, needs, to, it needs to touch an emotional component to, uh, you know, to their reason for being there. 
So I contend it's not the sales funnel itself that's the enemy here. It's how the copy is being written. And I think that there's a better way, an empathetic way. Do you agree with me? If we all got onto the empathetic bandwagon, wouldn't that be amazing? The quicker you embrace the empathetic marketing model, the quicker you will be in alignment with what today's consumers are expecting from you. And hey, if you disagree with me and think that the hype filled sales copy is the bomb, then most likely you are attracting those that feel the same way. And they are your ideal target market and you're catering to them. So there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but for the rest of us, embrace empathetic marketing and start attracting people who feel just like you. They don't want to be sold to anymore. They don't want to, they, you know, what they want to know is that you understand them and that you empathize with them and that you are acting in their best interest. Is that how you feel too? I, you know, when, when you know that when you want to work with somebody, when you want to buy with from somebody, when you want to support somebody, don't you want to know that they understand you, that they get you, that they understand what you're going through, that they empathize with you, then why wouldn't you want the same thing for your prospective customers to feel that about you? So I want to hear what you think about this. What are your thoughts on the empathetic marketing model? What are your thoughts on the sales funnel? And what are your thoughts on converting our thought process? And instead of push, 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 sale, 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 hype, 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 let's convert that into being authentic and and avoiding that hype and and being more real in our business marketing and and just catering to what our customers are wanting and needing and asking from us now especially now that we've gone through covid so let me know what you think leave a message and let's have a discussion about this and until then i'll talk to you next time bye for now